Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Civil War. We're playing our Confederate Let's Play as we play through the Grand Campaign, and we're well into the war, we're into the Battle of Chickamauga. In our last uh, video, we fought the first day of the battle, we got our troops over the river, we overwhelmed several Yankee troops that were using repeater weapons, and uh, we're now poised for the main... Uh, I guess, engagement, the the main action of the Battle of Chickamauga. Uh, so we'll pick it up where we left off. This was taken from a live stream from a couple of days ago, so um, you know you may hear me interacting with uh, a couple of people, but I hope you guys enjoy. As always, leave your thoughts below, and I'll catch you guys at the end. Thanks for watching. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Um, yesterday, the Yankees gave a good fight and prevented further advance. Today, more Union brigades are defending Lafayette Road, and reinforcements may have been sent to hold Lee and Gordon Mill. Our strength grows over time, and our officers have agreed upon an attack to set in about an hour. However, our pickets detected enemy movements toward our right flank. Could it be a Union assault or a feint to distract us? So the Union may be attacking up here in the north toward our flank. Uh, we've got our left wing and our right wing. Our left wing is unengaged, I believe, at this point. Our right wing was the force that engaged yesterday. So we have lost some casualties, but overall I feel like we gave worse than we uh, than we got. You can see we've spotted enemy forces marching down this road. We should deploy units to investigate. Uh, while we prepare for a frontal attack, we cannot allow the Federals to threaten our right. The ground near Jay's Mill must be secured. For the same reason, we must also hold... The Brothertown Road Junction. Actually, the Union advances here. I forgot about that. Reinforcements will arrive from the Alexander's Bridge Road, according to reports. Okay, what do we start with here? We've got three brigades on the left, two brigades on the right. Um, We get to pick what brigades we want. So, on the right, rather start with a stronger brigade. If we only get two brigades... Frankly, I'd rather not have artillery, and I'd rather have maybe Lynch's Brigade. They've got Harper's Ferries and almost 2,000 men. And Standard has Harper's Ferries and almost 2,000. So we'll have about 4,000 men in these woods up on the right. And then on the left, we'll have the Stonewall Brigade, which I believe they're... Let's go double-check. The Stonewall Brigade and their Fayettevilles. They'll kind of take position in this... I'm in the woods. I want them in the uh, house. House gives them eighty percent cover. Wood lines will give them more. But I don't know where the enemy is going to be coming from. I think they're going to be coming down this road. So, Arr, what do I do? Oh, we've got three more brigades over here on the far left. These guys will definitely go in the woods. Very good cover in the woods here. These guys up in the, woods on the left. These guys will kind of be more in the center. Keep them on, a, on the far right. Um, we'll move these up here, and I think I'll advance these guys through the woods a bit, away from the objective, to set up a little bit of a tripwire. So I think that's what we're going to do. Go ahead and play. Make some adjustments here. So... If you look here, all right, so Stonewall's Brigade can actually go in these fortifications here to guard the objective. These guys will go up in this wooded area. Enfield Brigade will advance a little bit as well. That'll hopefully prevent anyone from coming in on the Mississippi Brigade's flank, which will advance them up here. These guys up here. Mississippi over here. We'll also go ahead and detach some skirmishers from the Mississippi Brigade over here to kind of link these two units up. We'll move Otis's brigade a little bit further forward into the woods. We'll also send some skirmishers out in advance to kind of detect where the enemy's coming from. Standard will move here. Because this isn't really an objective over here. This is just a flank that's exposed. So we'll do all that. You guys are going to advance a little bit. Orphan brigade will move some skirmishers. I don't think I have any artillery deployed at the moment. So move here. This is the challenges with all this wood line is sort of keeping a cohesive line. Keeping everybody all together. Here, move butcher forward. 
my view, a forward defense is, is a better option. This will be in very good cover. At least initially. Assuming the enemy is going to be coming down the roadways. That's my assumption. Skirmishers here into this wood line across the way. Additional skirmishers up here. Skirmishers are really important in a battle like this, I think. I think. Remember, I'm making, making some assumptions. But I believe skirmishers are really important in a battle like this when you're in heavily wooded terrain. You can see the enemy is just barely in front of us. We, we can't see them. Alright, so we've actually got some enemy artillery coming in here. Lynch will move. A whole bunch of... Presumably they'll threaten our flank by going up and around them. They'll link up with standard. Baird's division from Thomas's corps is spotted. Our skirmishers picked them up right on the edge of the map. These guys are in really good cover. I'm hoping they can hold for a while. Otis. I think he's secure. These two skirmishers should give a warning if Otis's flank is exposed. We're going to pull him out. We're actually going to take the Stonewall Brigade as well. We're going to move them forward to try and hit the enemy a little bit out in front of the objective. We'll leave some skirmishers from the brigade in the in the post just to make sure it's sort of secure. The Lynch's skirmishers are being kind of driven back a bit. Get those skirmishers while they're in the open. Destroy them. Yes. All right. Good job, sir. Skirmishers, why don't you rejoin your unit? Long is kind of in the open. He's coming down the main road. Coming behind him, I guess. Again, trying to hit the enemy as far in front of the objectives as is practicable. This is a sprawling fight. It can be challenging to sort of keep track of. Andrew, you hit Kroton in the flank if you can. Otis and the Enfields are doing their job down here. And holding the enemy off as long as possible. We are a large mass of troops are kind of moving toward our skirmish line. The weak spot in our line. Remember it's wounded. Flanked, but he's only flanked by artillery, so I gotta think that's not too de demoralizing. Fields push forward. Alright, Otis, you come down here. I'm trying to drive but a wedge between us, I think. Orphan Brigade move back around here. The Lorenza should be able to hold the left against what we've seen so far. There's skirmishers come up here and deal with this artillery, which, again, if the enemy's wasting artillery fire and time on skirmishers in this battle, that's fine. It's really about buying time in this engagement, I think. Observer. His flank. I don't know if those are... It looks like Long has 300 skirmishers over. 
Alright, so we drove those skirmishers back, and now Crowton has a brigade on his flank and in his front. He's got a... Standard's in some rough terrain. I don't know how open Croxton is there. There we go. Rivers Brigade's being driven back. Brigade's getting a good volley off on him as he runs. And there you go. Marching to reinforce our flank. So we've got additional reserves coming up. Stockton over there. Exumer and Vaughn will move straight to the... The far right, I think, is what is most at risk. So it looks like we've got three brigades. We'll send two to the far right, one to the left. The left seems relatively secure, but there's a whole bunch of troops here in the woods that I'm a little concerned about. Also assuming there may be more enemy troops that'll show up here. Alright, good. Out that artillery up there. They can chase our skirmishers away from the objective as long as they want. I'm okay with that. Move up here and hit Connell. So far this is going a little bit better than I remember. The last time I played, the Union really smashed my right. And uh, it was serious, serious challenge. Not doing well. 700 casualties. Server. Trying to drive that battery of artillery back, but they've got really good cover. Minty's repeating troops. Moving through the open. Taking a good volley here from Lynch. He's going to try and get on uh, Standard's flank with uh, repeating weapon fire. Didn't last too long in that somewhat exposed position. And there you go. He's routing. Took another volley to the front. I'm trying to isolate as, as individual Yankee brigades come forward. I'm trying to isolate them as best I can. You can see here the Stonewall Brigade and Otis's Brigade both teamed up on Durver. There was another brigade in front of him before that that they both teamed up on. Kind of turning the enemy attack into our own chance to counterattack. Go back to the Lorenz Brigade. More brigades are attacking us from Thomas's core. So the Orphan Brigade skirmishers are probably going to need to fall back. Oh, God. Hey, Mikkel. Thanks for the host. All right. So those skirmishers just got obliterated as more of Thomas's brigades are coming up. So we probably overextended ourselves a bit, but Stockton's brigade of reserve, or not reserves, but is coming up as a reserve. We've got some brigades in very good terrain. The Orphan Brigade can always swing in and hit a Yankee Brigade on the flank as they come up. And Church's artillery's lost half of its strength. And now more than that. He must be pretty exposed there to be getting hit like that in, the, in what looks like very wooded terrain. We'll keep pushing with the Stonewall Brigade and Otis's against Jerver. If I can eliminate any enemy units at this point as, a, as any kind of risk, that's a uh, huge win, I think. Thank you very much for the host, Stoic Frog. Dr. Zaius with the host. Okay. Welcome to all the new viewers. Hey, Newhauser. Hope you're going. You're doing well tonight. We're fighting the battle of Chickamauga in uh, was it Tennessee? Or was it on the border? I can't remember. But it's it's near Chattanooga, Tennessee. Can't remember if it was across the border or not. Oh, I'd need to look at a map. I will say I do like when I'm playing Civil War games like this, hearing that uh, that rebel yell pop up in the. Uh, and the notifications is kind of seems to be fitting to me. All right, the infield brigade, you guys fire. Oh, you're blocked. Who's blocking you? All right, fire at Church's battery. There you go. Drove him back again. Driver's charging, but we're gonna hit him in the flank. Move stay. Oh, there you go. So we just destroyed that battery of artillery. We don't have to worry about them anymore. The infield brigade has lost a lot of men. The volley there from Stonewall's Brigade with their crack weapons, their Fayettevilles, these incredibly accurate weapons, just shattered Durver's charge and drove him back. 
Andrew, you're going to move up here, attack Croxton. I'm actually going to move Lynch's brigade up as well. This is a really spread out battle. You can see several brigades are coming in on what appears to be Otis's flank. Maybe a little bit overextended here. But we can swing the Stonewall Brigade around now that there's not a threat to its front. We'll move them at the double, get them into the woods, and then they can help guard Otis's flank. Yours truly, T.H. Butcher, myself, up here in the thick of things on Otis's flank. And these guys have really good guns, too. Also, I can bring these Mississippi Skirmishers up to at least delay King and Robinson as they come forward. We're kind of hitting Thomas's brigade as they come on the map. So, again, they're a little bit more open if they're trying to advance down on our objectives, which we're pushing away from, getting as much sort of leeway between us and the objective as we can. Hit some of these troops as they first come up on the map. I'm actually going to move this new brigade. I'm going to move Stockton's brigade north here to deal with what seems to be the biggest threat. There's around 6,000 federal troops there. You can see some blue troops running away that have been permanently routed. The Stonewall Brigade here in 93, 95 cover. So very good cover with very good guns. The Mississippi Brigade's taking some fire away. King's shooting at these skirmishers who are also in great cover. All right, so another enemy brigade... Is it McCook's Brigade from Rosecrans Reserve Corps is threatening our right? Okay, well, they're coming up as well. Don't I have some new troops? Yes, I do. I haven't moved these guys forward. I've been forgetting about Hexamer and Vaughn. We'll move these guys forward a bit. We'll move them on the double. They're in good condition. They're going to be moving through relatively open terrain to get them here to help Otis, who's about to get hit in the flank. Why don't you shoot your volley at McCook, who's like right in front of your face? Stonewall Brigade just fired a volley there. Our right flank must be secured. Okay. Uh, more brigades are sent to stop the Yankee. That's really, you're going to give me that update? That's all you're going to say. All right, so it looks like there's more federal troops and an objective now that we can push against with these three brigades. So I'm going to move these guys into this wood line. Maybe we'll try and take this objective over here on our left. See here, quite a few Yankees are coming up and threatening our flank here. McCook has been... Well, let's pull back the Stonewall Brigade. This is our best brigade. They've got our best guns. I've got 4,000 almost reserves coming up. What road have they secured? The security a, a road in our rear... They can't have many troops there. I've got reserves coming up. They'll retake that road. Alright, let's try and turn this enemy flank. Oh, and you're going to deal with McCook. Stonewall Brigade, you're also going to move forward on McCook. So is Hexamer. Team up there. These guys are a little bit of a tricky spot. Got some artillery coming up as well. Let's move them through this open terrain. I'm hoping this is just like an enemy skirmisher unit that kind of snuck through. Really hope I don't have to actually take it back in 10 minutes. I'm not going to get any troops there in 10 minutes. Alright, so we're going to shoot at Baldwin's Brigade, which is in this fort. Friends Brigade driving them back. Texas Brigade also arrived. Some artillery that we'll bring forward. Fife's skirmishers are coming up. I don't know. Again, we've only got three minutes here. I'm trying to move them at the double through open terrain. Better not tell me I lose. That would really suck. It's enemy artillery that took it? Well, that's not a concern. Two brigades of infantry are going to chew that guy alive. Especially considering he's set up in the open. No, 
Oh, there's an infantry brigade in support, too. Alright, in any event. We'll take it. Fear not. I thought these guys were getting chewed up a bit. Okay, so we retook the objective that we have to take. I'd rather you guys shoot at this artillery. This artillery is just sitting in the open and is going to fire a canister right into your flank. Right, meanwhile, in the north, these guys are being driven into open terrain. We need some ammo up here. Go ahead and bring our supply wagon over here. Go ahead and press them. Hasn't actually told us to go over onto the offensive yet either. I think I've got a whole other core coming up as re reserves to really launch the attack. Uh, what happened? Windows just popped an update on me. My screen closed. Okay. All right. So, these guys, I think Baldwin's brigade's been lured out of his entrenchments. I could be wrong. I've got two brigades that are really kind of getting slaughtered up there. But I do think I have the edge against Thomas's force. The Rock of Chickamauga, as his nickname would become. Um, I do think I have the edge against his troops, because again, they're largely in the open. They should be somewhat exposed here for us to hit him. Okay, you can see we're unbuttoning their line a little bit. Kind of got a little bit of a knot here to deal with. Alright, in the south, these guys are flanked from artillery in the rear. You just turn around and shoot that artillery. I'm gonna flank them anyway. Move the Orphan Brigade down to lend aid to the Mississippians. We're currently meleeing. Well, they're being driven back. Man, Baldwin's brigade did pretty good holding that position. Alright, you guys move here. On the double. Alright, so the Mississippians are being driven back. Baldwin is, I think, in the open. Should be able to hit him. Meanwhile, Thomas's core. Also kind of in the open. Minty's brigade is almost destroyed. We've got a whole bunch of artillery here that should be firing at largely point-blank range. You can see there are a volley of... What are these guns? These three-inch guns? Ten-pound ten pound parrots just dislodged Robinson's brigade. Alright. So the 1855s, you're going to come up and aid the Lorenzes on their assault on this fixed position. And the Orphan Brigade has finally drove Baldwin's Brigade out. But I think that makes for a good natural stopping point. Up to this, this point, the battle's been going relatively well. In our first day's fight, we got over the river without too much uh, damage. We inflicted quite a bit of harm on the Union. So far in the second day's fight, the Union have been coming down these roads a little bit piecemeal. We've really been chewing them up, kind of driving them back, and we've actually advanced beyond the objectives we need to hold and started pushing them further west. So overall, things to be, seem to be going really well to this point in the battle. Uh, and we'll see how things develop as the battle begins to intensify. But that will be for our next episode, so I hope you guys have enjoyed, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.